Cool. Um, so Tim, how many times have you, how many times have you sung the Beethoven's Night, either with or with the Mendelssohn or with somebody else? So I was trying, to, I was trying to think about that actually when I was um, thinking about our time today. And I know for certain I've done it three times with the Mendelssohn and the symphony. I think, I can't remember if it's been four or three, but I definitely, I definitely know three. Um, and I've sung it once outside of um, the Mendelssohn. So at least four, if not five times. Cool, cool. A million more. Why? I, I love this piece. I don't know. I mean, obviously for all of us, we have pieces of, um, music that touch us in certain ways for certain reasons. And of course I have various, you know, symphonic mass and choral masterworks that I love singing for various reasons, but there are two that uplift me more than anything. And especially when we get to do it under, you know, Meister Honig, which is just incredible. Um, when we, this is definitely one of those two. And I think it's just the, the spirit, well, obviously it's in the title, joy, right? But um, joy and triumph and togetherness and um, especially now unity and uplifting and kind of the, that just takes your spirit to a, a different place. And I think that's what this piece does for me and why I love singing it so much. That's awesome. What's, so do you recall, what's the other piece that you- Oh yes, Mahler too. Ah, okay. Those are my two, if I, those are two that I could sing on loop time and time again. They were in every season. I'm sure people will be so sick of it, but I, I could just keep going. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, good to know. So we can all add this, you know, to our playlists. Exactly. Playlist. exactly. In fact, some of my students, obviously we, I teach musical theater and so they don't, they don't always have the same connection with classical music, but they're always asking me, oh, if I, you know, I want to listen to more music. What should I listen to? And these are two pieces that I always steer them towards always. Mm. And now I can steer them towards our own recording. <laughs> you know, so amazing. Amazing. So cool. So what do you think is like, have you told your family or friends about this recording yet? Have you like, you know, does, is, is that cool? I mean, I don't know. Talk to me about. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been talking about it since they announced it at the beginning of the season that we performed it in saying that it was going to be a piece that would be recorded. Um, right. And so as soon as that happened, I mean, I'll, I'll jump to sing Beethoven ninth anytime, but as soon as we knew that it was going to be recorded, um, of course, I was so excited about it and the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, and I told my family and, you know, friends, colleagues, everybody, many of them came um, to the concert and just loved it. And then, of course, they've been like, when is that CD coming out? When is that CD coming out? And so it's so joyous to finally say, now! <laughs> Actually, it's today, the day we're talking about this here That's on incredible. Friday the 12th. Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Oh, man, there was another question I wanted to ask you, and I lost it, but hold on. The symphony. Yes. What is it like, either, you know, for Beethoven or anything, you know, being able to sing with the Pittsburgh Symphony? What has that been like for you? It has... Um, singing with the symphony has been just a major, I guess, inspiration, outlet, learning experience um, for my entire adult life. My first um, concert with the Mendelssohn and the symphony was uh, in 2003. Um, so I was 23 years old and I just could not I, I couldn't have been more excited for that opportunity, having grown up going to the symphony, um, watching the Mendelssohn perform. And then when I moved back to Pittsburgh, then I was like, I have to sing, I, I just have to. And that was, um, you know, back in the days of Mars Janssen and Robert Page, mm -hmm. um, which in and of itself was an, it, its own unique and incredible experience, but it really has transformed, but also guided, I guess, my musicianship my teaching, my way of teaching, my way of viewing the world, um, my experience in the world for my whole adult life now. And it's just, um, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's a blessing beyond what I can ever say. Cool, cool. Well, you know, this is, this is plenty. So Tim, I really appreciate, you know, the time. It's awesome yeah. to, 
like I I I have not had that experience. I mean, I, as you know, I'm a singer, but I'm not a symphonic choral singer per se. Right. So right. I I love 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 just getting your perspective and just you know hearing how I can imagine listening to it as a listener how it would how it I know how it affects me but to be able to sing it and to share it with like a hundred or more other voices with a group like the Pittsburgh Symphony oh I mean I can God. only imagine yeah the Freud got to be like behind it all and in the middle of it all and then you know the passion of the conductor steering us through this these glorious works I mean it truly is just it's it's a remarkable experience it's truly yeah remarkable yeah 